Hey guys, uh, so um, I was going to, I was just uh, UVing this helmet because I wanted to start uh, texturing it and so you normally can't texture something without giving it some solid UVs so I thought I'd make a quick video on my process of UVing uh, an asset in uh, May of 2015. So uh, one thing that will really help uh, your speed and process of UVing is good topology and topological flow. For example, this piece has shocking to topological flow. Um, if I go to edge mode and then double click on this edge, it'll do a pretty good job of selecting the edge all around, all the way around here. But once it gets on the inside, it gets a bit messy. And if I wanted to join this piece, th this edge along all the way along to there it, it'd be it's really tricky so if I hold down shift and double click this piece it shoots off to the left so I don't want that uh, if I double click this one it does same thing but it hits a pole here what I would really want is it to run along this edge here so if I double click that one and then click that one that one that one and just like weave my way down to this point here and then I've got to go up in here and then cut along here. So as you can see, this is a really shitty piece of mesh, really. Um, it's going to be okay for what I want, want to use it for. Um, uh, yeah, because it's not going to deform or anything. And, and I'm not too worried about polygon count uh, with this character. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it. But I'll show you this piece it will be much easier to UV. So um, this was originally a base mesh which I created in Maya and then I took it into ZBrush I actually remeshed it just so that the edges wouldn't have as much density to them they still do but not as much as they would have if I hadn't remeshed it and then um, yeah and then I just sculpted on it and then brought it back in here for UV. So uh, yeah, now this piece is perfect for UVing, and I, I'll be able to do this piece in a, a matter of minutes, um, and I'll show you how. So, um, yeah, if I select it and go to UV Deluxe, UV Deluxe is a plugin which you can get for free off the internet, and it's just really helpful for moving uh, shells over, uh, like UV shells across tiles, and doing a whole range of other things. I just find it really helpful. So um, I think some of these features have been added to Maya 2015. I haven't really had much time to check them out, but I, I've just always used this for the past few couple of years. So yeah, um, as you can see, I got nothing, no, no UVs here at the moment for this piece. That's because none have been created. So what I normally do is this piece is symmetrical. So, uh, well, it's roughly symmetrical. So I can go into side view and I'll go, just to start myself off, I'll go planar map and I'll go to the option box. Make sure you have it set to camera and keep image width and height ratio. Having it set to camera is also really helpful in that if, if you're working on a pretty uh, difficult mesh, you can actually just like select faces. I'm holding down shift and um, the two ar the the arrow keys I mean the the less than and greater than keys to grow and shrink my selection and then if you select a an, an area of faces and then go create UVs planar what it'll do is it'll planar those directly to the camera in your UV shell and um, yeah so it's perfect for that sort of stuff if you just want to quickly and then this is basically ready to go apart from a little bit of an unfold and now that's perfect ready to go for production um, but we want to do the whole thing so if I select the whole thing and then go to a side view go create UV's planar map uh, so now if I go into UV deluxe you can see I got the whole piece in there now I just want to cut along here and along the entire edge so I've got it separated out into well actually I can just cut it around the edge and then have it in two pieces and in that case okay so I've changed my mind now but the way I was going to do it is I was going to cut it there and then um, and then cut it also around the outside 
which will go all the way around. And see, I just needed to hold down shift and double click that edge, and it selects around the whole thing. And then I can cut this. I'll just show you as an example. I can then go to UV Deluxe and use this button here to cut it. And then I can uh, hold down, so right click and go to UV, and then select uh, one UV point. Don't drag because you'll select through to the other UV shells, but if you just click one of the UVs and then go select shell, move it, hit G to redo a, um, a command, and then I've got four pieces, and then I can go through and make sure these are all flattened out and ready to go, and that'd be fine. But if but I can do one better and make sure that these are just one piece. So what I can do instead is I'd probably UV this from the front instead. So I'll go create UVs planar. I'll show you again. That's what it looks like. So it's um, captured from the front. Uh, and then I can just go edge. Double click this edge. It goes all the way around. I already know that. Um, but always, you always want to double check and make sure it all, all matches up. Otherwise, you won't be able to unfold it correctly because it might still be stitched somewhere. Uh, and then I'll use cut, UV, select, select shell, move it. And then uh, May of 2015 has an optimized unfold tool. The algorithm is better than previous versions of Maya. And when you click it, it basically does everything for you and then hit G to redo the command and there you go you have perfect ready to go UVs sometimes if you're not sure if the UVs are perfectly unwrapped um, this is a tool I used to use in previous versions of Maya but now I don't need to use it what would normally happen is if I left click this unfold and then hold and drag along it would unfold all these vertices but it's perfect so there's nothing to fix um, yeah uh, and then another good way to check if your UVs are solid is to open up your hypershade and then I got this um, this tileable texture uh, off the internet just type in like UV tile texture or something and you get something like this um, yeah that's basically what it looks like and then I repeat the tile 4x4 four four, just because it's easier to read um, on larger objects and then apply it and then you can see that as long as all the squares are perfectly square then yeah it's it's perfect and ready to go um, also having seams along the edges means that they're hidden if I had a seam running along here you would see where the textures stop and start across the two uh, UV shells so avoid that and just try um, hide your UV seams as best you can even if I wanted to I could probably run a seam under here because once the helmets on like the rest of the helmets in place and the guys heads in there you're not gonna see the interior very much at all so as long as I don't have a seam running along the outside then that's okay um, but yeah, as you could see before, when I UV'd this piece, it's really quick and easy just to double click an edge when I have really good uh, topology and it'll run all the way around the outside and yeah, it's ready to go. Um, a good example of a bad UV is if I go in here and assign it to this piece and you can see it's stretching here. So um, this is a piece that I still have to clean up a bit. but yeah this is what you don't want this is what you want and also uh, another important thing is making sure that your uh, UV tiles are a similar size um, in situations where you may only want uh, like you might want more resolution on the uh, on a character's face than on his feet that makes sense um, like you're not really gonna see the cat you may not see the characters feet that often but you're gonna see the face most of the time so you want more resolution on the face in this case uh, the helmet has multiple pieces all close to each other um, and if I'm applying a texture to this area it's gonna be smaller and more defined than it would be on this piece if it's the same thing that I'm projecting on it um, so a good way to 
make sure that they're the same size is going to UV Deluxe And then if I just select this one, go UVs, Ooh. Oh, for some reason it's not, let me select both tiles, that's odd, hold on, let me see if I can work this out, select shell, move it, ah oh, there, there we go, it just wigged out for some reason. But now, if I increase the size of this one to match this one, but actually now they're getting way too big for the shell. So what I should really do is resize these ones to that one. So I basically just look at like the size of the A and the A here, or the size of the box. And it looks like it needs to be a bit bigger. Uh, and you don't have to be a hundred percent. You just got to be close enough. And that looks pretty good. So yeah. Now I can, um, another cool button, if I want to lay these out in this zero to one space, I can hit this and it lays it out as best it can um, and, it, well, and it also gives you a good starting point, but um, I normally just go in there and then move pieces around. Another good quick tip is, so as you could see just then, if I, um, uh, how do I do this, if I select the pieces like that and then go UVs oh no it didn't happen that time but sometimes if you have uh, a, a UV shell disappear when you select an, an, another one that that just means you need to select and then shift select the other one and then you should be able to work with both at the same time so yeah that's uh, that's about it if you have any questions about my process or anything just send me a comment um, down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I can Thanks.